Welcome to Breaking the Couch, a weekly conversation demystifying what happens in and behind the therapy scene to support your healing journey. We're your hosts. I'm Dr. Dowson, a licensed clinical professional counselor, a certified school psychologist, and a trauma specialist with Playfully Psyched. And I'm Dr. Joharchi with Soft Heart Psychology, a licensed clinical psychologist. We're here aiming to provide you with mental health tools to address the cycle of generational trauma across the age span from infancy and childhood to adulthood. For more information, visit our Instagram page at Breaking the Couch or our website, breakingthecouch.com. While we hope you love listening to and learning from our podcast, it's not a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Okay, so we're back. And today, let's really dive into this whole concept of New Year's resolutions uh, and planning ahead and, you know, setting goals for oneself. And maybe let's look at that from a therapeutic perspective, um, especially for people who've experienced trauma and just for the everyday person as well. Absolutely. I've been hearing people already talking about New Year's Eve resolutions or New Year's resolutions. And uh, some of your articles came to mind. So I was like looking through and trying to find um, what I've heard you talk about around New Year's resolutions, because I tend to hear that. And I know that people really want those changes. And we are a trauma podcast. So I thought we could talk about some things around, you know, um, maybe like a less Hollywood version of New Year's <laughs> resolutions, and maybe a little bit more realistic, um, kind of support our listeners today um, to think of some really specific things that they would like to welcome into their life if they didn't have charge or trauma around certain things. Mm-hmm. Which is good because um, I like that you're trying to bring it um, in a down to earth, more realistic in this in that sense. What you're referring to, to for everyone listening and watching is that I don't like New Year's resolutions. Um, I don't believe that they're helpful. And if we actually look at the data and the research, we see that most people who set a New Year's resolution in January, thinking about this from like the Western calendar, right? Um, usually by the middle of the month, January, they've completely given up on their New Year's, resol- New Year's resolution. And definitely by February, March, um, it's a thing of the past. And then they're kind of waiting. Mm-hmm. So it's this idea of always waiting until a specific moment a specific date on the calendar, a specific time before I then start to change whatever it is I want to change or before I start to adopt a new thing. And so my thing is, if there's something you want to change, figure out how to do it immediately, as soon as possible now. But the waiting, waiting until Monday, waiting until January, waiting until the new year, waiting until X, Y, Z. I'm going to wait until I meet the love of my Mm -hmm. life. I'm going to wait until I'm a parent. I'm going to wait. You're missing out. And uh, you're probably not going to actually hit that goal if you wait. And so with Dr. Jaharji, you're going to kind of help us understand what are the ways that we could now kind of explore going through that change. Absolutely. Yeah, because um, I, too, have have fallen into that category of I'm going to wait until Monday. I'm going to wait until January first, like a thousand times around diet mentality. Right. Like if I'm being really transparent. Mm -hmm. That has been my biggest one. I'm going to buy this new journal Mm -hmm. and do this and do that. And I'm going to, and, and, and then fill in the blank a thousand and then, and then I'll address blah, blah, blah Mm -hmm. around diet stuff. Um, And it's, it's kind of sad to reflect on, but I'm happy that we could provide some transparency and some guidance, like you said, based in research that uh, it doesn't work for a reason. It's not you. Uh, it's the it's the way it's set up, right? Um, exactly. Yeah. So one of the things that I would like us to do is just kind of to envision what it would feel like um, if you had this this protector part who really wants to diet, who really wants to comply with society or whatever, right? If that part of you wasn't feeling so charged or traumatized from whatever, protective around whatever what would you feel like you'd like to welcome in? And and sometimes people will say, I just want to be happy. I'm like, okay, well, let's dig a little more in there is I just want to be happy, you know, that I don't want to be so reactive, that I want to playfully psyched, you know, I want to welcome in more fun and play. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, For me right now, what I really want and need in my life, if I felt a little less charged around my perfectionism, Mm -hmm. um, sometimes looks like, like procrastination, if I really get down into like that, that future template stuff from EMDR, what it is for me that I want is to um, have some freedom around that perfectionism and be out there in, in nature. So that means for me, being away from my phone, being around the trees, that type of a thing. So really like kind of thinking about what that looks like for you, not okay, in this new year, I'm going to be such and such size or such and such weight. Um, because like Dr. Dalton said, you know, research doesn't support that. So let's set ourselves up for some success. Mm-hmm. What I'm hearing is that we're trying to help people go into a little bit deeper when they use such a blanket, huge, broad statement, like happy, right? Be specific, mm-hmm. create that. And I think that's really important because just like when we catastrophize, when we like think of a situation and we're like, it's gonna be awful, you've gone into details in your brain, you've gone into what, why you think that's gonna be so horrible, what's gonna happen, right? So do the same thing for the opposite emotions and experiences. What does happy look like? Is what you just described, Dr. Deharti, right? Like, what does that look like for you? Give me a specific day that you're feeling happy. What would happen on that day? Um, mm-hmm. What sounds would you hear if you, if you have hearing? What sights would you see if you have sight, right? What sensations in your body would, ex- what you experience, right? Pulling in all those textural pieces so that you can, A, get some of those benefits right now, right? Because mm-hmm. as we dream, as we fantasize, as we go into those, our body doesn't know it's a dream or fantasy. Our body goes there, right? So you get to experience those benefits. Um, but then also it can actually help us create, and what I'm hearing, I think what I'm hearing say, is it gonna help us create a better roadmap, a better plan for you know, how to achieve whatever the, the happiness or whatever that end goal is, um, and hopefully show that we don't have to wait until January or Monday or whatever be until then. Um, we don't have to wait for that. Is that kind of what you were talking about? Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. And I just, I think that there's such an opportunity to look at this from a trauma recovery lens because, um, you know, sometimes people will be like, what activities do I do with my loved ones? What do I do now that we don't bond over, you know, this, uh, this sad, these sad moments or this uh, awful experience or whatever, this t- traumatic incident. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that this is that very reassignment for those parts that had to be, I'm just going to use the perfectionism as an example again, those parts that had to sort of build walls and protect through, I'm going to show up in this way kind of getting to those parts of, well, what will it look like when you are having less of that perfectionism? And maybe it's that, you know, um, uh, you want to be more involved in social justice activities, or you want to um, be more engaged, you, you know, you want to kind of like re- um, assign your energies. So it's not that that part of you dies, is that there's so much more energy that you have, I think, uh, to kind of reassign or, or to engage in a way that's like a little bit more intentional than reactive of like, okay, you don't always have to go into fight, flight or freeze around this thing. There, there is that energy opened up inside of you. And now you can reassign it towards fun or towards engagement or, you know, these type of things. So you're saying that parts of you um, can transform or evolve? (laughs) Yes. I think so. That's a real question. I think so. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think that's a beautiful way to look at it because I think that even in my understanding of thinking about parts, um, my limited understanding of thinking about parts has been that that part always stays, right? So I like that you're saying that it stays, but it can be reassigned to have a different duty have a different function and maybe it you know maybe it can protect you through fun maybe it can um take some of you know it doesn't have to it doesn't have to forever be the protective part that looks exactly like this it can also 
morph and change into something else. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think that hopefully in some some kind of quiet, less pressured sort of uh, reflection, you know, meaning quiet from society's pressure, hopefully with like less of that, um, you know, those things will become revealed, that those parts will tell you what they need. Like, yeah, I need some rest in here, or I wanna get out and play, you know, or I wanna be engaged with people. I'm less scared of people, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So interesting. We're gonna reach another episode. What do we do when um, all your parts wanna just get out and play? <laughs> <laughs> um, but and maybe you're not able to do that or whatever that looks like, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think this is, I hope this is helpful for folks. Again, you don't have to wait. Um, and then when you're ready, when you're actually ready, you know, kind of exploring what this can look like for you. Right. Um, Absolutely. We've done a little bit of sprinkling in of EMDR and part stuff. Be sure to reach out to us. Uh, you know, we're about halfway through somewhere in that mark of our final season. So definitely reach out to us with, hey, I want more EMDR or I want more parts or I want, you know, more parenting tips. Like let us know in our last couple handfuls of set. Uh, I was going to say sessions, episodes, um, what you need, because we we really do care. We know there's a lot of people, you know, from Kazakhstan listening, and we appreciate you so much. Um, anyone who's listening, we we appreciate you, and we want to know what you need. I love that you said that. I was just about to give them a shout out and say thank you for the listeners in Kazakhstan. And just to let people know, we thought it was pretty cool. We made it to the top 18. We were number eight. We ranked number 18 in Kazakhstan. So. Um, whatever we're doing out there to help support you. We were glad that you're listening. And um, again, you can reach us on Instagram at breaking the couch. You could tag us in your stories, leave comments on our videos and our posts. You can find us online, breaking the couch.com. You can leave a message on anchor or Spotify. If you want to leave a message that way, you can visit our website and submit the survey and let us know what you need until next time. If you are looking for a therapist for yourself or your child, you can visit our websites, playfullypsych.com or softheartpsychology.com. We appreciate you joining us this week and can't wait till there's another opportunity to jump on the couch with you next week.